Hello, I'm M.K. Davis. What you're about to listen to uh, is a recording of a phone conversation that I had with a gentleman uh, who was a bear hunter in the Bluff Creek area back in the late 60s and early 70s. And he uh, approached me uh, with, a, with a story and a, an actual article uh, a rifle that he had obtained from the Bigfooter and uh, the movie producer, Ivan Marks. And I have several of these interviews. They're kind of long, but they reveal quite a bit. And the more you listen to him, uh, the more you realize that he knows some privileged information. Uh, and so... I, I have a good listening ear, and I let him talk, and uh, and so uh, he's deceased now. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll uh, go ahead and start it. I'm, I've never seen a picture of Roger Patterson, but just they had a picture supposed to be him. Kind of a tall, not skinny, but slender, you know. And um, what you think of a Texan, skinny Texan looking guy, you know? Well, I never, I, I, I guess I must have missed that one. I, I've never seen that one. Yeah. Yeah, I was on the History Channel last night. Yeah, you know, I was about mad about a hour, hour and a half. Well, did they, did they did they actually say he was by himself, or did they just fail to mention other people? That's that's all that they mentioned. That's what I'm saying. They never said he was by himself, but they never indicated anybody else with him. Okay. Well, we you know he's you know. And, it, and the one they showed last night, the film of it, um, Patsy or whatever her name is, I bet she walked fifty seventy five feet or better. In, in what they were showing on television on, on the deal you know, last night. When you, you, she walked... Was, huh? Go ahead. What did you say? They, they showed this... Uh, what's her name? Pat, and it was a creature. Right. Um, I bet you they... Uh, uh, she walked across, uh, you know, through the woods and everything. I bet it was at least a good minute or so or better of, um, of film. And I thought to myself... Well, where'd they get this? You know, where'd, where'd they get this film of this like this? So the, the the show last night showed more footage than they normally show. Yeah. You know, ordinarily just show, shows her in her turn a little bit and that's it. You know, yeah. Like five seconds, six seconds. I bet they had at least a minute or a minute and a half of her walking through the woods videoing it, showing it. Uh, were okay. They, she was actually in the woods or on the sandbar. On the sandbar. On the, yeah. yeah. In the woods, but anyway. Yeah, but but it was more more footage of her. Yeah, yeah. What 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 was the name of the show? Uh, uh, it was a History Channel Bigfoot. Okay. Last well, night. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, you, so you know, so Ivan Marks was is a possibility then, uh, because he has all the equipment and stuff to to yeah. develop film. Well, see, in, in my fit, in, you know, I got a uh, he sent me um, a video. I mean, this deal of uh, uh, Legend of Bigfoot, you know. Yeah. And then after after the show, then it went on showing me other. He, he also directed and uh, uh, helped produce several movies. Yeah. Well, I knew, I, I knew he was in the movie business, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and if he has all that equipment there and all his chemicals and everything and develops his own film, well, yeah, he would be a possibility, you know, because uh, if, if somebody did not actually step in and develop that film for Patterson, there's no no way he can send it off on a Friday and get it back by Sunday. Uh, unless somebody like Ivan Marks or could develop it for him, you know. 
on short notice? Well, I don't know. You know, it, 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 just by what they told me, and I'm just repeating what Ivan and them said, you know. But I do know, I have been to his house. I stayed at his house. I got, uh, he gave me the gun, there's a man, and he's got this building out there. It's not just a building, it's a nice looking house structure type deal, you know, like a big apartment yeah. uh, house type. And there's no killing. He's got, he had, um, uh, you know, like when you walk in, go into a walk in theater, they'll have a cardboard dummy uh, showing the movie star and the name of it and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, okay. cardboard cutout, yeah. Yeah. He's got a bunch of those with his names on the bottom, uh, video, or anyway, uh, uh, something of the stars, he, he uh, directed that, where they were uh, in, in uh, underground, like Martian type stuff, you know. Yeah. He, uh, he, and this is in this video, he gave me, showing, showing me stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if he if he had all of those resources there, uh, I guess that he knew Patterson. I guess so. Uh, most of the Bigfooters around there did know each other. Yeah. Well, he's supposed to have been with him. He's, yep. he's supposed to have been Roger Patterson and his wife, this Bob Gimble, and a guy named Green, something. And then there was another guy that was Green's backup. And then there was Ivan Marks and Peggy Marks. There were seven, seven or eight of them all together that was there when this happened. Okay. Well, that's interesting. You know. Yeah, I know you had told me before that Ivan, Ivan was, you know, a part of the the incident, you know, where they shot yeah. some Bigfoot. Um, yeah. Are you talking about that same incident? Yeah, yeah. The only thing I know is what they told me. I wasn't there. I can't say, you know, I, I, I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't think Ivan and Peggy would have lied to me. No, I doubt it too. They might have. They, I mean, they may have, but I don't think they would. But that's, that's not the kind of thing that a person would make up. I mean, uh -huh. um. And I'm just repeating what they told me. Yeah. You know, they're supposed to have the little tractor left in the hole, you know. Yeah. Okay. His his son-in-law and son still lives there in Orleans. Okay. What's their names? I can't remember. I know how to go into their house. But they got, uh, before you get to Orleans, where Icy Road goes up. Yeah. You, know, you turn to your left, go up Icy Road. It's back about half three quarters of a mile and then back in the bushes back in there uh, up 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 icy road no off of uh, the road going into orleans okay off, off of 96 yeah whatever it is yeah they got a big old barn back in there where they they used to have four or five families living in that barn well, what, what what kind of tracker was it you're talking about A track layer? Yeah. Uh, I'm not familiar with the term. Is it like a backhoe? No, not a backhoe. It's a, a caterpillar. A small, a, a small dozer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know that? What's that guy? What was the guy's name? You can't remember the name? I can't remember his name. But because you know, Al Hudson. Al Hudson mentioned a guy named Charlie Whitson having a, a had some. I can't remember. Of course, Charlie Whitson was from Willow Creek. He wasn't from Orleans. Well, this, um, uh, Schumach, Schumach, Mr. Schumach. Well, back then, back then, um, I don't know, the, the, the caterpillar that was used, or the lower dozer, it was from the guy there in, in Orleans. Just before you get to Orleans. Okay. So so they, they dug the hole with a caterpillar then, not a backhoe. No, they didn't have a backhoe back those days. 
Okay. Well, I can believe that because see, there's teeth marks in the hole. Uh, uh, if he if he had them a cutting type, you know, the the blade had the the little serrated teeth on the bottom, it would make that kind of a scrape mark, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, it, a waste, of, you, you, waste of money and energy to have one, even working on the county roads. Well, you know, it's it's uh it's even even at that, you know, uh, uh, you can't really dig that deep on that sandbar. You can only go down just to the rocks, and uh, it, I, you know, it's it's a it's got a bedrock down there, just uh, you know, sit five yeah. or six feet, you know. Uh, you only have just so much sand, so. Well, as many years as it's been, um, I don't know. I know about for it, Seth, but I'm, I don't know exactly. But I know about. Yeah. I believe I could walk to it. But um, all that country in there um, has had a big washout, you know, back in the, oh, what year was it? Yeah. You talking about that 64 flood? No, it wasn't 64. It back up in the, around 77, 80, something like that. Okay, okay, later now. They had big floods through there. They're not, you know, they had a big washouts and stuff. And it could have washed a lot of the dirt and cleaned that out a lot too. Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's always possible because, uh, you know, that's, that that sand is just loose, you know. It'll it'll wash away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that area down in there, you know, if if you don't have no, uh, if you weren't around back in those days, it's kind of hard to come in there, you know, and figure things out where different things were, because you know changes have occurred. First time I was ever in there was uh, I got married in sixty four. Was the first time I was ever in there. Sixty four? Nineteen sixty four, I think it was sixty three or sixty four. I went in there, we went up and I stayed there we stayed there about three weeks bear hunting all in that country. Me and I hunted with those Indians and I split with them and I was killing bears for the heights to sell the pearl of them, the hares to make fishing lures with. Make what? Oh, fishing lures, you know. Uh, like, like, you know yeah, bear, bear, bear hair makes... Bear so much longer. Bear hair makes good fishing lures? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know. Bear hair was so much longer than the bears down in San Joaquin, you know, down where I lived. I made a deal and I went up there and, and uh, I had a guy coming up from Los Angeles come up and buy the bear hikes from me. What would you get for a bear hide? Well, there, uh, I'd get 175, 165, 175, depending on the bear. Yeah. And I'd keep them sometime. They bought some one time, they brought up a vacuum cleaner and even vacuumed out the barn. <laughs> they wanted any kind of hair they could get, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And then I started killing them for the money in it, you know. Yeah. But I went up there down that country. Uh, I landed there at Willow Creek, and then we hunted over towards, uh, like you're going back towards uh, uh, Blue Lake, like you're going back towards Eureka. Yeah. Okay, we hunted all in there, and then we moved to camp up, well, which is now Icy Road. Then all it was was a deep four-wheel drive road. Yeah. It wasn't even a road. Now, See, you, road, now you said you... Icy road, it goes way over and goes way over into, into uh, uh, Oregon. Yeah, it goes to a little town called Gasket. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, there's this little town on the coast called Gasket. Uh, um, you say you landed. Did you fly Did you fly in there? or? No, we drove. We drove deep. Full-wheel, two-wheel trailer to haul the dogs in and the regular jeeps. 
Did you did you use did you use Airedales back then? No, we used anything that run a bear. Anything that run a bear. Oh wow, that's that's a lot you know, of dogs. We'd have cracking collars, and we'd lose dogs, and maybe a week or two later, before we ever find them, they'd show up for a lot of dogs. They never come back. Well, you know that's it's rough hard country. To get around up in that country. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know how you I don't know how you cut them off or anything in that kind of rugged terrain. You don't cut them off. You just let them tree the bear. Then go to them. Go to them. Shoot. Skin it out. Bring the hide up. They had pack boards, put the hides on the back, pack boards, and put them on our back and bring them out. Well, let me, uh, you know, and let me, let me ask you, know, you this, you know, in, in that film that I call the tracking dog film, uh, it's yeah. got, it's, they've got a hide laying there on the ground there in a little pool of red, uh, watery blood, and they got a, a white looking German shepherd looking dog, yeah. and they took him over and let him smell it. Um, and I've always assumed that what we were looking at is a Sasquatch skin because these people were down there looking for Sasquatch, you know. Um, so uh, it, it's a, that's not really a, the type of dog that you use for hunting, uh, a, a German Shepherd type. They, uh, they call them, Ali, 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 I forgot the name, Alisation or something that like that. That dog they used was just a plain uh, white German Shepherd. Uh, police dog. He wasn't a German Shepherd. He was a police. Oh, well, poli yeah. They, yeah, they said that uh, the guy that handled him said that he was a real, you know, dangerous dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they and he uh, he he kept him on that leash all the time with that, you know, with that yeah. halter where they could keep him tethered at the chest. Right. Uh, he wouldn't. Yeah, he, he, he yeah he he. Uh, he would never turn him loose off that because he said the dog was dangerous. Dog was dangerous. Yeah, he said he was a, a killer. Yeah. Uh, well, see, the thing of it is, uh, I asked Ivan, did he put any dog? You know, uh, if he ever hunted them, he said he'd never been to work. He had taken dogs and gone in, work, like in this movie, uh, Legend of Bigfoot. And took dogs in to run bear and stuff, but he he said he'd never heard of anybody having a dog that could run the big things. Yeah, well, they they brought this dog in out of Canada. Yeah. Oh, uh, and and the same. The, well, I guess they train him. Oh, uh, they he just whatever they put him on, he chase. Uh, or, you know, no, no, I, I'm not really sure what his history was, but they had used him to run Sasquatch more than once. Uh, he, I, don't know. I don't know how they. I, I assume that they were letting him smell that high, uh, and that you know if that's well, if yeah, that was the. Where, where's the where's the Bigfoot's hide? Where's his hide at? Oh, uh, it's in that film. It's laying on the ground. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I say. Where'd he go to? Oh, well, good question. Good question. I, I'd like to know that myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I had dogs, and I'm not bragging on them. I am, but it's just a bare fact that. I had, there was no better Mary Lion dogs. Or, and two of these dogs I had, I put them on humans before. And would they run a human? Huh? Would they chase a human? They chase humans. Really? They attack a human. And by gosh, that deal that we got up there, up there at uh, Mosquito Lake, when I told you my boy in the uh, client scene, you know? Yeah. Those dogs would not, in fact, they peed all over themselves and bit me to get back in the truck. Now they were dogs that, I, in fact, um, um, I had them on grizzlies up there in Yosemite. That's when I was, I was, you know, I worked for fish and game, uh, not as a fish and game officer, but killing rope bears and stuff, you know. Yeah. And both these dogs, I had them on grizzlies. And uh, of course, grizzlies won't climb; they just bay up, you know. Yeah. And they were they were mean dogs. And, uh, and this one bitch I had, I'd put her on humans before. But she wanted no but she wanted no part of that smell of the Sasquatch. Not no part of it. Well I'm at, she, that's where I'm I'm wondering about these dogs that they're talking. Of course, I mean, anything can happen. And, you 
you know, uh, if a guy's got a dog that run one, more power to him. Well, uh, a fellow told me that that if you t- if you have the proper scent to train a dog with, that you yeah. can you can train a dog to run almost right. anything. Right, you can. But the deal of it is is getting that scent off of off of off of right, where, right. And if so, they got the scent, well, where is this where is this body that they got the scent from? That's my that in in that in that video, Larry. There's the hide, okay. And yep. then, and then they change to another scene where they're up against the, an embankment in the bed of the creek, and there's a, a, what appears to be a hide rolled up inside out, with the fleshly part to the outside and the hair to the inside. Yeah. And the dog is barking furiously at that hide and rearing up against the the leash, you know. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't. I don't. To me, I mean, I'm not knocking it. I don't know. But I'd say myself that they had, they probably had a bear hide and just making the show that there was a Sasquatch. Well, but possibly, but, uh, uh. Hollywood. Well, maybe, but they, I don't think they were trying to make a movie for Hollywood, uh. They, uh this, no, I'm saying it's a Hollywood type of a scene, you know. Yeah, well, I guess that's possible. Um, but this, it was the same fellow you were talking about uh, that was with Ivan Marks, Green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah same guy. It could have. I don't know. Now, I didn't see Ivan Marks in there, but I saw Gr- Green was there. And and uh, yeah. Bob Titmus was there. I tell you what, I think what happened there. I think Ivan Marks and Peggy was doing the filming, and Ivan got the rifle from this Bob Gimble. And Bob Gimble was doing the shooting with this rifle I've got. I think that's the way it, the, the, my idea of the, the, I think that's what the story really ends up being. Well, you know, it, it's because sir- Ivan, Ivan was a photographer, not only, you know, he was a director. Yeah. He was a photographer. So you, you, you think, uh, you think that Ivan Marks and Peggy Marks were the filmers? I, I, I that, I'd say so. Yeah. Well, that would exp- right. that, you know that would explain it, how, them getting the film developed quickly. You know, what you're about to see now uh, is actual footage taken by Ivan Marks and Peggy Marks down in the bed of Bluff Creek, and it was featured in a movie later on. Uh, and he tries to explain or explain away. Him taking shots at the uh, the the subject, the creature. But uh, like you said, you have to kind of uh, read between the lines on this. Uh, Peggy Marks told me in a phone conversation that this piece of footage you're about to see was the only footage that he made where there was an actual real Bigfoot in the movie and she was the one doing the filming according to Marx so let's take a look at this in June 1981 my wife Peggy and I was out searching for Bigfoot tracks in Northern California as we walked across the clearing carrying a camera in my uh, right hand and a rifle over my shoulder my wife carried a Bolex movie camera, just to like one out of the And all of a sudden, we heard a gunning sound coming from out of the bus. I told my wife, here, yes, hold this camera because I think we have the bear coming. When I first saw the beast charging at me out of the bus like a grizzly bear, my first thing was to shoot in self-defense. My wife photographed the entire incident until her camera ran out of film. Then while she switched cameras, the beast charged at me one more time, and I shot. And then it went down. As we run around so we get a better look at the creature, I had to shoot one more time to discourage, because it looked right straight at us, and I did not want to kill this thing. And as I watched it drag off into the bush, I did not fire any more. But then, as the creature surprisingly raised up and began racing off through the timber, I fired three more shots in this close proximity just to scare the thing away.
to them more like this. What are we going to do? I said, let's get out here. Let's run. Because I don't want this thing coming back. I don't want to have to kill this creature. So immediately, we run as fast as we could. Back to where we had dropped a lot of our camping gear. Back to our take up and went home. Well, there you have it. According to Peggy Marks, this was the only act, uh, scene or Bigfoot scene that was real. She says the only one that was not a depiction for a movie was the one down in the creek, uh, Bluff Creek to be specific. I thank you for your time.